No Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Yamaha revs your heart, and by FXR Racing World Class Outerwear. This definitely isn't my first tour in Quebec. I've ridden all over the province on tours with both Supertrax Magazine and Snowtracks TV. Uh, I love riding here, so every time the opportunity comes up for a trip to Quebec, I volunteer immediately. But this tour is gonna be just a little bit different than anything I've done in the past. Generally speaking, when we ride in different areas than our own hometown, we have a guide or host showing us how to get around. But I wanted to see what riding here was like from the perspective of a typical rider here for a vacation with their own sleds. So I decided to navigate the route with no guide at all. I'm really excited about this. It's kind of turned this trip into a bit of an adventure, but it also has raised two problems. First, it's never safe to ride alone, especially if you're not familiar with the area. And second, I didn't want to get lonely being away from home out in the Quebec wilderness for three whole days. So I called up my buddy Stefan to see if he'd want to join me on this trip, and of course, he jumped at the chance just like I did. I've known Luke ever since I was a little kid. We grew up together over the past 20 years, and I've been on several snow tracks trips with him, and I always make time to go whenever he calls. I was especially interested in this trip because I've never ridden in Quebec before. I've heard so much of how amazing it is from Luke and from other friends who have been there. I'm, I'm finally glad that I get a chance to go and do this. It's nice to go out on a trip like this with a friend like Stefan. Um, it gives us a chance to spend some time together and catch up on both of our busy lives. It's also going to be an adventure and with no guide, the only thing we're going to have to get us where we're going is a map and each other. The ride Stefan and I are going to be doing over the next three days will take us from Auberge du Lac Toro, just outside of Saint Michel de Saints in the region of Lanodier, to Pouvoir du Lac Blanc, just outside of Saint Alexis de Mont, then on to Hotel Sacacomi in the Maurice region, with a day of riding around Saint Alexis de Mont area in between. I've heard a lot about the town of Saint Michel de Saints. It really is a famous snowmobile uh, town, and it's it's a great starting point for riders going on big multi-day tours. It's a snowmobile friendly place that's home to one of the best skidoo dealers in the country, Location Hut Matawani, and they have the largest fleet of rental sleds in the country, over 600 of them. These things aren't just fan cooled touring sleds. You can rent anything from a two up cruiser to a full on performance sled like an 800 Rev XP. This may not be important to a group trailering up here to ride. But anyone who lives too far away to drive to St. Michel de Saints, they can fly in and still rent really good sleds and experience the awesome trails that Quebec has to offer. There's a lot of destinations in North America that have excellent trails, but make you suffer through subpar accommodation and food if you want to enjoy them. Auberge Lac Toro is an amazing lodge that's made completely of logs. It's located right on the shore of Lac Toreau and is classy, clean, and inviting. It's really a place you'd feel perfectly comfortable bringing your wife. Unfortunately, our time here was short-lived. We left Lac Toreau first thing in the morning and headed for Pouvoir de Lac Blanc. The trails in the Lenodier region are they're spectacular and they're diverse and they're fun. They're wide and fast, they're tight and twisty. They take you up and down and, and into all different types of scenery and surroundings. I, I really have to say that in terms of trails, Quebec is super hard to beat. In the morning when we left Lac Toro, we first rode out onto the lake. It was pretty sweet. And then after, we got onto some really good trails, and the trail system was awesome. They were smooth, really wide. It was, it was a lot of fun.
Our first on-trail destination was the dam at Lac Tureau. This is a really famous landmark destination in this area, and a trip to the Lenodier region would not be complete without a ride across the dam and a time to stop and take some pictures. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Quebec Original, where the snowmobile calls home. Our first on-trail destination was the dam at Lac Tureau. This is a really famous landmark destination in this area, and a trip to the Lenodier region would not be complete without a ride across the dam and a time to stop and take some pictures. The dam itself is massive, and the trail actually crosses right over the top of it. At first you think, I'm not actually supposed to go over that, am I? Then you realize you have to if you want to keep going. It's a pretty unique feature of this section of trail. After the dam, we had about 40 miles to ride to our lunch destination. Just like the trails before, these trails were smooth and they were excellent. And I think we only hit like two or three bumps the whole way. Most places I've ridden are quite flat, but here in the Lanon DA Maurice region, the elevation changes and the vistas are amazing. Right between Lac Tureau and our destination, Lac Blanc, lies a very unique little spot, well known to locals and local riders, but completely new to Stefan and I. La Place de Real Massé is an extremely unique trailside stop. It's a dedicated fishing lodge in the summer and an awesome snowmobile destination in the winter. Real Massé is a former Montreal Canadiens hockey player and an avid outdoorsman and hunter, and that'd be putting it mildly. The restaurant on site was full of old sports memorabilia and hunting trophies, and more importantly, the food was really good. <laughs> Stefan and I took the opportunity to relax for a bit over some hot chocolate, but before we left, we had to get a tour of Real's trophy room. I've never seen so many animals in one room before. This guy has hunted all over the world. It was really neat, and if you're riding in this area, this is a must do. When we were done at Real Messe, we actually had quite a bit of riding still ahead of us. We'd been told that the ride from Real Messe to Lac Blanc was about the same distance that we had previously ridden. We wanted to get out there before dark, so we hit the trail. As we got closer to the Maury Sea side of the authentic Quebec tourism region, uh, the trail started to get a little bit tighter and quite a bit busier. But despite the increase in traffic, the trails were still absolutely excellent. In this region, there aren't really a lot of small towns between the small towns. So once you leave your lodge or lunch stop, you're not likely to hit another gas station before you actually get to your destination. So make sure you're full of gas before taking off. There really aren't a lot of intersections on these trails either. You literally get on a trail and ride for 30 or 40 miles. Uh, so getting lost around here really isn't a big issue. By the time we rolled into Poivre de Lac Blanc, we were pretty tired. We've ridden over 150 miles and we were looking forward to just shutting down for the night. From the looks of things, Poivre de Lac Blanc was a perfect place to do exactly that. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, the cornerstone of every adventure. I've had a ton of fun so far on this trip. I've had a chance to experience great food, awesome riding, and really good lodging. But from what I've heard about this next place that we're going to be going to, Hotel Sakakomi, it's going to be absolutely amazing. We decided to take a bit more scenic route to get from Lac Blanc to Hotel Sakakomi. The trails around the town of St. Alexis de Mont are equally as well maintained and as all the other places that we've ridden, were definitely the tightest and most windy of the trip. Well, I really liked the hydro lines and fire roads and fast open sections we rode on day one and two. The tighter bush trails around this area are really more interesting to me. There's so many ups and downs and twists and tight turns. Uh, it really makes the miles fly by. 
This part of the trip took us north from Lac Blanc, then into the Maurice National Park for a section, then back south to Hotel Sakakomi. There were all kinds of options along the route to put on more or less miles if we wanted to. The last section of the ride took us past a famous ice formation right on the shore of Lake Sakakomi, then down the lake, past the hotel up on a hill. When we pulled into the Hotel Sakakomi snowmobile garage area, I have to admit, I was a little bit confused. I'm used to pulling my sled right up in front of a lodge, getting out and walking in, but Hotel Sakakomi has a different philosophy. They prefer to keep the lodge and all forms of sports separate from each other. This means whether you're snowshoeing, skiing, fishing, skating, sled dogging, or snowmobiling like we were, your gear is stored away from the lodge. Luckily, your sleds are kept in a gated, locked, and covered corral area, and the pathway to the hotel is elevated and lit. So after you realize how it works, it makes perfect sense. When we first entered the hotel, I was really impressed. There was massive log beams and there was a huge fireplace right in the middle of the lobby with a really neat seating area around it. And the more I looked around, the more impressed I was. Just behind the lobby is a bar lounge area with access to a massive patio. It sits three stories up and is at least 30 feet from the ground. Because the lodge is built on the side of a hill, the patio overlooks the entire lake. If it wasn't minus 30 outside, I would have loved to have stayed out there longer. The patio area completely surrounds the dining room, so while you're eating, you can get this great view looking out over the lake. Of course, we're in Quebec, so the food is ridiculous. I think I counted eight different forms of meat on the dinner menu alone, which is perfect for tired riders like us. Sakakomi is known not just for its food, view, and comfortable amenities. It's also very well known for its Nordic-inspired Geo Spa. Stefan and I decided if we're gonna stay at Sakakomi, we had to see what all the fuss was about. So you're walking down the hallways in the hotel and you're following little signs on the walls directing you to the Geo Spa, and finally you get to the end and it opens up into this incredible spa environment that has every possible spa feature you could ever ask for. From relaxation rooms with big fireplaces to treatment rooms, eucalyptus steam room, saunas, indoor and outdoor hot tubs, even a koi pond and an outdoor fire pit you're actually supposed to sit beside in your bathing suit outside. The spa was absolutely incredible. Luke and I immediately gravitated towards the outdoor hot tubs and the steam room. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a beautiful waterfall going into a small wading pool, so I decided to go over and check it out. It turns out that this was a cold bath. The idea is that you get all warmed up in the hot tubs and saunas, and then you run out into the freezing cold waterfall that's just a few degrees above zero, and then run back into the hot tub. Luke was too chicken to do this, so I volunteered to do it. And it was quite an experience. It was unfortunate that our trip had to end at Sakakomi, but there's no question, Sakakomi meant it ended on a very high note. This place is among the nicest I've ever stayed and really does cater to snowmobilers in a different, but equally as accepting and appreciative way as any other snowmobile destination in Quebec. On this trip, Stefan and I have seen and done things you can really only see and do in Quebec. We've experienced different food, different accommodations, and a whole different culture. I think we've really seen the best Quebec has to offer, and I know that we'll both be back. I think if you're looking for something different than what you're used to, you really should check out the authentic Quebec tourism region. It definitely has what you're looking for. Test Ride is sponsored by Camelplast High Performance Tracks. Revive your ride. Here's something you probably didn't know. Skidoo claims to be the world's number one seller of four-stroke snowmobiles. And this is with only two four-stroke engines, the 1200 Fortec and the 600 Ace. On this week's test ride, we're going to unveil Skidoo's third four-stroke engine, the all-new triple-cylinder 900cc advanced combustion engine. And it is the world's first snowmobile engine with electronic throttle control. Make no mistake about this, 
Skidoo is deadly serious about not only being the number one selling snowmobile in the world, they're just as rapidly enthusiastic about being number one in every segment of the market, including high performance, crossover, utility, mountain, and four-stroke. At this writing, they have achieved number one status in virtually every segment of the industry. However, they feel there's more depth to the four-stroke market, and to this end, they've attacked the previously uncharted 90 horsepower segment. As far as we're concerned here at Snow Tracks, we think the 90 horsepower segment is the domain of the 500cc two-stroke. Skidoo thinks there's still business to be had at the 90 horsepower level, and that they can convince buyers to buy a 90 horsepower four-stroke instead of a 90 horsepower two-stroke. Are they right? Well, we're gonna find out in model year 2014. There's more going on here than just an assault on a new segment. There's Skidoo's incredible utility market domination. Skidoo literally produces more utility snowmobiles than the other three OEMs combined. This motor will find its way into the utility market, which Skidoo has already flooded with the new four-stroke 600 ACE. Two more areas Skidoo is after with the new 900 ACE triple are the rental market and the entry-level market, and that's where this story gets interesting. The 900 ACE includes a drive-by wire throttle with three separate modes controlling how the engine responds to your throttle inputs. This is techie stuff from the auto industry and opens the door on exceptional user control. The drive-by wire throttle also includes what Skidoo calls the learning key. You better pay attention here because this gets confusing. The drive-by wire throttle offers three response modes at the touch of a dash-mounted toggle. There's eco mode for outstanding fuel economy and less than pulse-pounding acceleration and throttle response. There's standard mode for a generally linear but somewhat filtered feel at the flipper. Then there's our favorite, sport mode, which raises idle by 200 RPM and delivers response that's cleaner than any previous Skidoo four-stroke. If you can read between the lines, we're saying this mode eliminates throttle lag. Finally, the 900 ACE comes with two separate DESS tether keys. One provides for normal operation, the other can be set to limit top speed to as little as 25 miles per hour. Rental operators and parents are gonna do backflips for this feature. When it gets down to it, you really want to know how the 900 feels on trails, the way you ride. Here goes, power here is eerily quiet, quieter than any snowmobile in production today. In fact, the engine's exhaust note disappears at about 25 miles per hour and is replaced with the sound of the rotating track and a subtle whoosh in your helmet. Power from the 90 horsepower EFI triple is impressive. We identified a fairly substantial lump of torque at about 4,000 RPM, which surges the 900 ACE ahead with authority. Top speed on hard pack lakes was regularly between 85 and 88 miles per hour. Fuel economy was E-Tech good at trail speeds, not so much at WOT. Here's the question we keep getting about the 900 ACE. Will a 600 E-Tech type get a buzz from this 900 four-stroke? Here's our answer after logging substantial miles. On twisty trails, a 600 E-Tech will not run away from this 900 four-stroke. However, when things open up, the E-Tech's 30 extra ponies will not be denied. Does this mean the 900 ACE has to find its own market with recreational riders? We think so. The 90 horsepower two-stroke segment has mostly gone away with only Arctic Cat playing there. The big question is whether the 900 Ace can make it with recreational snowmobilers. The versatility of this new engine has allowed Skidoo to slide it into XS MXZs and Renegades, XR Grand Tourings, and XU Utility Skin in its first year. We suspect Skidoo knows something about their utility and rental business we don't and the 900 is going to ring a bell with these markets in a substantial way. There's a lot going on with the new 900 Ace, and we're here to tell you the engine is a success from a performance standpoint. What we're going to have to let you, the snowmobile consumer, decide is whether you attach value to the most sophisticated engine and operator control system the industry has ever seen. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover.